Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates, Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. In today's video, I'm going to explain a little bit about the five love languages and give you some ideas of the do's and don'ts, depending on the love language that you're working with. If you're curious, stay tuned. What's on your mind? Okay guys, so the five love languages is something that some of us are extremely familiar with and more and more I'm finding out that some people have literally never heard of this before. So I'm going to briefly talk about what the five love languages are. It is a concept that was developed by Gary Chapman. I have read the book with my husband and one of the things about that book is that I thought he gave some very practical ideas for how to implement the different love languages. There are five, so words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and gifts. So those are the five love languages. I have recommended this book before. I really enjoyed reading it. If you're the kind of person that doesn't like books that have any sort of religious undertone, this might not be the book for you. If that's not your thing, maybe you can take the meat of it, just the different types of love languages without necessarily delving into the examples. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the things that I would recommend you do to show your partner, best friend, child, how much you love them, and then also some things not to do because one of the most profound aspects of the book to me was that these love languages can actually give you insight into the ways that you can hurt the people you love the most. Now, because this is Valentine's Day, I will be catering this video a little bit more to romantic love, so if you've got a partner, but do know that all of these can be inspiration for ways to show the other people in your life that you love them too, if you suspect that you know their love language. Now, if you're curious about what your love language is, maybe just hearing them right off the bat, you know which ones matter the most to you, but they do offer a quiz that you can take for free. I've been taking this quiz for years. My husband and I have been together. It'll be this year, 12 years that we've been together. And we've been taking this quiz throughout our entire relationship. And what's so interesting is that our love language list, the ranking of it actually changes throughout the year. So I'm gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of loving your partner using the five love languages. All right, let's start with words of affirmation. Do, here's an idea for you to use when you're trying to love on your partner. You could write them a love letter. That way you can get their undivided attention for them to know every single thing that you love about them. My husband did this for me when we first started dating. Communication was an area he really struggled with, so he was a lot better when he had time to process his thoughts and can write them down. He would put things in there that he admired about me or things he noticed over the years, things that make him proud to be with me. That's filling me up in a way where I can deal with a little bit of angst or frustration within our relationship. And specifically with words of affirmation, your partner is going to probably be very sensitive to criticism, insults. So just as a love letter would make them feel so wanted by you, when you say things to them like, why would you do that? I'm disappointed in you. Particularly what happens in front of other people. Different words that would really stick or hurt them. Even things that you're like, hey, I didn't say anything that bad. I didn't call you out of your name. Because words matter so much to that person, it can really, really sting. When you speak highly of them in front of other people, that's gonna send them soaring because now everyone knows how much you love them. But when you speak down on them, especially in front of people, those things stay with them for a long time. And keep in mind, all of these don'ts you want to avoid, but we're not perfect, right? So if there are some things we can avoid more than others, you know, we wanna put our attention and energy into avoiding those things. Next, let's talk about quality time. If your partner loves quality time, then there's nothing better than you segmenting out an entire day, for example, to spend with them. Now on the expensive end, of course, we could book a trip, go to a fancy dinner, but if they're a quality time person and not a gifts person, you probably can save your money and just make time for them. It doesn't have to be expensive. It could be you two watching a movie that's very special to you from your past. Maybe you taking the time to set up a picnic outside for them. Maybe creating a day based on 
previous dates you guys did, your earliest dating phases. Quality time is all about that intentional time spent with your partner. What are the don'ts of quality time? If your partner is a person who really enjoys quality time, one of the worst things you can do is promise them time and then take it away. If your partner is a person who loves quality time, you really need to be careful about your calendar. You don't want to double book. You don't want to make this person feel like you're not considering them. You get them excited that you're going to come home at this time or you can't wait for you guys to cuddle. And then you get there and you just either go straight to sleep or you say, oh, sorry, I have to stay late at work. To you, it might not be a big deal, right? Because you're thinking, hey, I'm here, we live together, or I'm with you all the time. But to them, they're thinking, hey, I feel rejected. I'm not a priority in your life. So those are some of the do's and don'ts for quality time. All right, next, let's talk about physical touch. This one is interesting because a lot of people read physical touch and they think it's all about sex, but it's not all about sex. Now, sex might be amazing for a person who loves physical touch because that's the ultimate physical connection, but they don't want you to only touch them when you're ready for sex. That feels kind of transactional. That might feel inorganic. So when you have a person who's all about physical touch, maybe an idea you could do, you know, just something cheap, free, that could be fun, is you say a style of touch. So maybe rub, kiss, pet, those sort of things. And then you have body parts, right? And it can be very benign body parts, right? You could say elbow, neck, leg, foot, right? And you can throughout the day, your partner, maybe they get five times to pull out of the raffle and you'll do different things, you know, maybe give them a massage or rub them, just making it fun where they don't know what touch is coming next, but what they know for sure is that there's gonna be a physical connection between the two of you. Now, if your night ends in sex, great for both of you, right? But don't make that the goal. The goal is for your partner to feel like you want to touch them and be physically connected with them. Now, the don't, for physical touch. You definitely want to make sure if this is your partner's way of receiving love that you are not physically rejecting them. And I see this all the time, especially in times when we're already frustrated with our partners. Sometimes it's tempting if they're coming in for a hug or kiss, you turn your head away, you push them away, like not right now, leave me alone. Because you're trying to deal with the emotions that you're having. And for you, maybe it's not a big deal because you're like, hey, we can hug, we can kiss later. But that person might feel so rejected that what I I see happening is a guard starts building. They don't feel as comfortable with you anymore. They don't trust you anymore. That even in a moment where you guys are frustrated that they can come to you and still get a hug or get love, reassurance from you that things are going to be okay. So if your partner is a physical touch person, try your best, no matter what the mood, not to reject a physical touch. Now that doesn't mean that you have to have sex with them, but you know, those more intimate touches that are just small reassurances, small validation that the love is still there, like a hand on the shoulder or a pat on the back. You know, if you're even needing a break from a tough argument, taking the time to just pat them and say like, hey, I'm gonna take a few minutes to gather my thoughts and I'll come back to you. You want to be able to, even if it's hard with your pride, be able to provide them with that. Just letting them know, like even though we are in a weird place right now, we are not disconnected physically. All right, the next one is my husband's number one love language language, which is acts of service. Things you can do for an acts of service person to make them feel extra loved and special. Maybe there are a ton of chores. Acts of service people typically are busybodies. They're always trying to show everyone in their life that they love them by doing a bunch of different tasks for them. Maybe they're running to their mother's house to help with something, on the phone, working with somebody to teach them something, washing clothes, washing dishes, helping with the kids they might be very, very involved. So these people typically have a lot of tasks on their plate because this is how they let the people around them know that they love them. And so something you can do is alleviate some of those tasks. A lot of us, I know I benefit a lot from my husband being acts of service. You know, there are so many things that he actually enjoys doing like cooking. But one thing that I can do for my husband sometimes is just say like, hey, you know, you've been doing this, this and this. Let me pack your bag for you if we're going on a trip or I'm going to take over doing the dishes. I know you hate washing dishes. I'm going 
gonna handle that for you. Oh, okay, you did some laundry, let me put that laundry away for you. So looking at little things that they would need to do throughout the day and taking that on for them can make them feel so loved and appreciated by you. Things you don't want to do, the way that you can really hurt them, all you do is focus on things that they haven't done. So you say, hey, you didn't even pick this up, you didn't, and all they're hearing is what about the 10 other things I did today that you haven't even said thank you for. So with acts of service, it's really important for you to pay attention to the different things that they're doing, just so that they know that these love efforts they're making are not in vain. So be careful about pinpointing different things that you want to get done, especially if you haven't yet acknowledged the different things that they've already done. And lastly, let's talk about gifts. Now, the interesting thing about gifts is that a lot of times the people who actually have their top love language as gifts are really afraid or embarrassed to admit it. I hear a lot of people say I'm not a gifts person when in reality, based on my clients and the things that they're complaining about, it seems that they really are a gifts person. There is no shame in feeling loved through receiving or giving gifts. So don't assume that that's materialistic because it doesn't even mean that you need expensive gifts. A lot of times it's just that feeling that a person has prioritized you so much that they are willing to spend their hard earned money to make you feel that love. And it can be something cheap too. It could be a box of chocolates, it could be flowers, it could be just a card. You might not even write anything in the card. It could just say thinking of you. Just little things to let a person know that you are thinking about them throughout the day. For some people, it could be food. When you go to your favorite fast food restaurant, remembering what their order is and bringing them something too, that can mean the world to some people. So gifts does not mean you're materialistic. That's just another way to feel loved. If you are with a person that loves receiving gifts, something you definitely want to avoid is to throw it in their face later that you bought them things. So a lot of people will give people gifts, but as soon as you get upset, it's like, I'm taking that bag back, or I never should have bought you this. You're driving a car I put you in, right? If this person's love language is gifts and you're saying you're gonna take it back because you're mad at them, what are you communicating? You're communicating that your love is conditional, that you only love and give them things when you're happy and pleased with them, and that if they make you upset, those things can be taken right from under their feet. So you really wanna be careful with the gifts person that you're not throwing the gifts you get them in their face because then the next time you get them something nice or extravagant or even small, they're gonna wonder what's the catch. So those are the five love languages, the do's and the don'ts. Hopefully you got some ideas and inspiration for ways you can make your partner feel loved, whether that be on Valentine's Day or any other day of the year. And so many of these are also applicable to your littles, to your friends, to other family members. It doesn't have to stop at somebody you're in a relationship with. Let me know some of the best ways that you have felt loved or things you're really proud that you've done for someone that you care about and what love language you think applies to you the most. My name is Stephanie Yates. Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short. I truly appreciate you for watching this video all the way until the end. I ask that you subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with a friend, share it with your partner, share it with anyone that you think might find it useful. I truly appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh.